What if I told you that with just a few clicks, a hacker could buy a $100 Starbucks gift card for a single penny or get $2,000 worth of free food by gaming a referral system or even add unlimited funds to their Steam wallet by just changing an email address? Today, we're diving deep into one of the most dangerous yet overlooked vulnerabilities in e-commerce, price manipulation attacks, business logic vulnerabilities, and API parameter tampering. I'm going to show you three real-world cases where major companies like Starbucks, Uber Eats, and Steam had critical flaws that allowed hackers to manipulate prices and essentially steal thousands of dollars worth of goods. You'll actually see footage of a real hacker performing one of these attacks in real time. Price manipulation attacks. Our first case takes us to Starbucks Singapore, where a security researcher discovered what might be one of the most expensive bugs in coffee history that allowed attackers to purchase gift cards worth any amount for just one cent. Basically, this researcher stumbled upon the real-life equivalent of an infinite money glitch, except instead of a video game, it was one of the world's largest coffee chains. Here's how the attack worked. When you buy a Starbucks gift card online, your browser sends payment information to Starbucks's servers through HTTP requests. The hacker discovered they could intercept and modify these requests to change the payment amount from $100 to just 10 cents, while the server would still generate a valid $100 gift card. Now, let me show you exactly how this attack was performed. I'm going to show you actual footage from the original security researcher, Kwok Saad who discovered this vulnerability and responsibly reported it through HackerOne, which is a platform where ethical hackers find vulnerabilities that companies want to know about and get rewarded for it. Watch this carefully. First, the researcher intercepts a post request to the checkout endpoint. Hold on, let me pause this for a second, because I know some of you might be thinking, what the hell is a post request? Don't worry, let me break this down quickly. When you click Buy Now, on any website, your browser sends invisible messages to the company's servers. Think of it like sending a letter. The post request is that letter, and it contains all the purchase details. What you're buying, how much it costs, your payment info, everything. Normally, you can't see or edit this letter, but hackers use special tools to intercept it while it's being sent, like catching the letter mid-flight, and they can rewrite parts of it before it reaches the company. In this case, they rewrote the price from $100 to 10 cents. The crazy part? The website just accepts whatever the letter says without double checking. All right, back to the attack. That slash egift slash checkout.php. In this request, there are three critical parameters, text amount, amount, and text custom amount. The researcher changes all of these values from 100 to 0 0.1, that's 10 cents. After modifying these parameters, the system redirects to the shopping cart. Here's where it gets interesting. When the researcher clicks confirm, another request gets intercepted. This time it's to iGift slash payment PHP. And there's a parameter called VP swipes amount that contains an encoded value representing that 0.1 amount. Here's the critical moment. When the researcher proceeds to pay for what should be a $100 gift card, the system uses that manipulated VP amount value of 0.1 from the previous request. So the payment processor charges 10 cents, but Starbucks' system still generates a valid $100 gift card. Think about this for a second. Someone could have bought a $100 gift card for just one penny. Then they could automate this process and buy thousands of gift cards they could have gotten $100,000 worth of gift cards for just $10 total. I want to emphasize that this vulnerability has been completely fixed by Starbucks, and this research was conducted ethically through HackerOne's bug bounty program. The researcher, Quaxodded, was rewarded for finding and responsibly disclosing this issue, helping make Starbucks more secure for everyone. The Uber Eats Referral Exploitation Our second case comes from Uber Eats where a researcher named Joshua Bryant Gaynor discovered what might be the ultimate way to get free food. He found a way to exploit Uber Eats' $10 referral program and turned it into a $2,000 personal buffet. Now, 
This is different from our previous Starbucks case. This wasn't a traditional hack with intercepted requests, but rather a business logic vulnerability where the system worked exactly as designed, just not as intended. Uber Eats had a simple referral system. When someone uses your referral code for their first order, you get $10 credit. Joshua's genius was realizing he could game RetailMeNot.com's coupon system. Instead of trying to get people to use his code directly, he would make his referral code appear as the top-rated Uber Eats coupon on the site. Using iMacro's browser automation and proxy servers from Hoor.net, Joshua created fake accounts to upvote his referral code hundreds of times. This pushed his code to the top of Retail Monat's search results for Uber Eats discounts. Every time someone used his code, thinking they were just getting a discount, Joshua automatically received $10 in credits. He accumulated over $2,000 by essentially hijacking Uber Eats' own marketing through a third-party coupon site. Joshua would then use these credits for small orders where the $10 discount covered the entire cost, getting completely free food. This exploit forced Uber Eats to completely rethink how their referral system worked with third-party coupon sites. The Steam Unlimited Funds Exploit Our third case takes us to the gaming world, where a hacker named Darbrix discovered what might be every gamer's dream turned nightmare for Valve. He found a way to add unlimited funds to his Steam wallet through an ingenious API parameter manipulation attack. The attack started with something seemingly innocent, changing his Steam account email address. Debrix changed it to something like bricksamount 100 abc at email.com. That amount 100 part wasn't random. It was the key to the entire exploit. Next. He would go to Steam's Ad Funds page and select a payment method that uses Smart 2 Pay, a third-party payment processor. He'd start a normal transaction, let's say for $20, and proceed through the checkout process normally. Here's where it gets technical. Using tools like Burp Suite, Dieter Bricks would intercept the post request being sent to Smart 2 Pay's API. This request contained all the payment details, including the amount, merchant ID, and, importantly, his email address. Now, smart 2 pay protects against tampering by using a hash signature that's calculated from all the parameters concatenated together. You can't just change the amount because the hash would break and the transaction would fail. But Dollarbricks found a brilliant workaround. He realized he could split the original amount equals 2000 parameter into amount 2 equals 000. When smart 2 pay concatenates these for the hash calculation, amount 2 plus 000 still equals amount 2000, so the hash remains exactly the same. Then he changed his email parameter from customer email equals bricks amount 100 abc at email.com to customer email equals bricks and amount equals 100 and abc at email.com. This injected a new amount equals 100 parameter while keeping the hash valid because when concatenated, it still produces the exact same string. Here's the crucial part. There are now two separate processes happening. His actual payment method, his bank or PayPal, only sees and charges him for the original small amount, let's say $1. But smart to pay receives the manipulated request with amount equals 100 and reports to Steam that he paid $100. When Durbricks reported this vulnerability, Valve immediately escalated it to critical severity and paid him $7,500. They fixed the issue within three days, realizing that this exploit could have cost them millions if it had been discovered by malicious actors. So there you have it. Three completely different approaches to exploiting e-commerce systems, but all with the same devastating potential. These vulnerabilities could have resulted in stealing thousands of dollars worth of goods and services if they had been discovered by malicious actors instead of ethical researchers. What's fascinating is how different these attacks were. Starbucks was pure technical manipulation, intercepting HTTP requests and changing price parameters. Uber Eats was business logic exploitation, gaming a referral system using automation and social engineering. 
Steam was API parameter tampering, exploiting the communication between payment systems through clever email manipulation. The financial impact could have been catastrophic. Starbucks could have lost millions in fraudulent gift cards. Uber Eats had to redesign their entire referral system. Steam could have seen their marketplace economy collapse. We're talking about vulnerabilities that could bankrupt companies if exploited at scale. And if you're running any kind of e-commerce business, remember, never trust client-side data, always validate server-side, implement proper business logic checks, and consider starting a bug bounty program. Paying a few thousand dollars for a vulnerability report is infinitely cheaper than losing millions to exploitation. If you found this breakdown fascinating, make sure to subscribe because I'll be diving into more real-world cybersecurity cases like these. This is actually my first video on this channel, so if you enjoyed it, please hit that like button. It really helps me out. I'm still learning, and I promise the next videos will be even better. Drop a comment and let me know which case surprised you the most. And if you've ever encountered suspicious pricing on websites, until next time, stay curious and stay secure.